Greetings. Hello. This is Lisa. Ah, oh, it's so good to be here, isn't it? Well, today is the first of uh, the month. It's August, it's summer, it's beautiful, and how wonderful it is to be here with you. Um, this is Lisa from Heal Within, and uh, this is Heal Talk with Lisa. Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Hello, Andy. Nice to have you with us. Hi, Nora. So, what a magnificent time it is to be together with all of you and realizing today I'm going to be talking about some uh, a wonderful topic. Well, I don't know if it's a wonderful topic, but it is a topic that has been coming up over and over, not only with my clients, but with some friends and other coaches. It is about self-imposed limitations and blocks and walls that we create and we put in front of us and that we hold ourselves back from everything that we do. And what do I mean by it? Uh, let me take these off because I can't hear myself when I do. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, just say uh, thumbs up so that I know I am being heard and well received. If the video camera is well, just let me know. Uh, respond if you can hear me. That's all I need to know before I continue. Well, hello for all of you who's joining. Hello, Michael. Hi, Anne. Hello, Mariette. Can you hear me? Good. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Today, we're going to be talking about limitations. Limitations, not that it's a reality, but self-imposed. How we hold ourselves back from the things that we believe we either are not worthy of or that we think we are not able to do or can't do. Right. Have you felt that ever? I'm sure that you have because I myself have felt that. As a matter of fact, not too long ago, I was in that space of, ah, uh, whatever I touch, whatever I do, it's not working, it's not happening, I am feeling overwhelmed, and I was under a lot of duress. And what happens when we feel overwhelmed? What happens when we feel overloaded? This uh, self-infliction of either... We pick up a habit, a negative habit, most of the time, because when we feel under stress, we don't necessarily reach out for something that is good for us. Uh, we go for something that it becomes a sort of a subconscious, unknowingly, a, a punishment. Like it was not bad enough to feel all that stress and overload might as well go and hurt myself more and the pain is as bad let me give you an example so just a few days ago I had a client who came in overloaded with stress overwhelmed with a lot of pressure not only from work being an executive and being under the gun to deliver a project that he had within the next few days. Well, too many expectations at home, three kids, wife, and his parents, one of his parents was at the hospital, and his partner at work fell and broke his leg. Now, 
if you think that stress affects only the middle class, the lower class, this is high powered. So the reason I'm bringing this is because we all have our own stress levels. We all feel overwhelmed and overloaded. And just because someone is at a higher level does not mean that they have less stress or they're not overwhelmed. I think every level in its own has its own. So with all that stress, he came in to get some coaching, to get some tools, and to do hypnotherapy, to de-stress, bring his blood pressure that had almost hit 190 more, and he was walking around with all that anxiety, and what did he do? He picked up a tool that he had not touched in the longest time. You see, we all do this. We all do this fight and flight. And what did he do? He took, stole time away from work, away from family, away from everything, and he went to the casino. He found the closest casino. He went there and he lost himself in that casino for three hours. It's not that he is an addict or a gambler, but that is what he loved doing long time ago. So he found that avenue of going to the casino and he lost a lot of money, but money is not an issue, not for him. But that three hours of losing himself and being engulfed in doing nothing but play the game and be in that noise, be in that environment that used to be fun for him, his blood pressure came down. He came back with more pressure, more expectations, but somewhere, somehow, he found a way of coping with them because he had found his place of some people do meditation, others go running. That was his place of safety. That was his place of, I go to relax. So we all have a point and a place that becomes the hub for us to escape. I know you're going to say men have that escape like when they come home and it's their cave and men's cave and women have that too. We all have it. It doesn't matter if it is a man or a woman, uh, young or old, we all find a place that we escape. If we can turn that escape place into somewhere that is more positive. And again, gambling was positive for him. Money was not an issue. And he came back more relaxed and found ways to cope with the project. He delivered the project on time. And after one session, he had the tools of, instead of beating himself up for going to the gambling, going and losing the money and being away when everyone was texting him and he was not responding because he truly shut off the phone. It's not that he was dissing anyone, but he was reconnecting with himself. And that's a perspective that I gave him to look at. It was not a negative, but to look at something that he perceived negative and everyone else gave him um, the nine yards and especially coming from family of where you were and workers. But for him to look at it as something that he did for himself, as something that he did to appreciate himself and to take himself out and give himself the time out the way he knew best to cope and deal with something that is stressful. 
and he was overwhelmed with. What better way to come back and tackle something that is stressful, negative, and shine? You see, the part of everything we do, what he created, that negativity of why did I do it, and then go back into blaming himself, shaming himself, and beating himself up. And once I help them see the other side of it and come to understand and smile for something he did and how he shut that time off to give back to himself, and so many of us do, and how we pamper oneself, how we appreciate ourselves, how we change habits and behaviors. And if we can look at it with a different perspective, right? It's turn whatever is negative and put this wall that is right in front of you. If you can push the wall and separate yourself from this big wall, and have enough room that you can move, right? Then you will realize it's not a wall. Maybe it's just a tunnel. Maybe it's a silicone. And how large or how tall is this silicone? Can you fit in it? And if you can move around and touch this wall, what if you can put your hand and see that there is an opening from the top? And turn that wall, that silicone, as a protective shield for yourself instead of an overwhelmed shield. Hmm. And to talk about shield, what if we can take that wall and imagine in your own mind's eye, and this is what I do with my clients, take something that is so overwhelming, overbearing, and if we can turn that wall, and in your own mind's eye, that issue, that problem, that wall, that block, shrink it down, go ahead. As a matter of fact, take one minute at this very moment, and if you can take whatever perceived, perceived problem, issue, negativity, hardship, guilt, shame, blame, whatever it is. And in your own mind, just watch that wall shrink, 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 and become this big or this big. Let's make it this big, right? And if we make it this big, look, hey, <laughs> if we can make it this big, and make it this big, right? And then it's big enough that instead of that wall, you can even put a handle on this and make this into an armor. An armor with a shield that you can hold that anytime you feel a threat, that you feel you need a self-preservation, self-protection, self um, shielding, you can just pick it up in your own mind's eye. Sometimes you don't even have to have it visual, but if you can create that visual, whatever it is, and make it a shield, then you can use that and let go of all the barriers, let go of the wall. You know, here's another tool that I usually use with my clients. And I say, what if that road that you want to travel, the and all the blocks, all the bumps in life, everything that you see in, as an obstacle, that you can't even see beyond where you want to go, 
turn those obstacles into those orange cones. You know how the orange cones that when uh, the city workers or construction workers, they want you to pay attention to the road that it's closed, those um, orange cones, they're quite heavy, they're plastic, and you can easily pick it up. Well, for some of us, we can easily pick it up and move it or just push it. What if they are just orange cones? Which is the like the traffic light and it's the yellow the yellow light, which is the orange light, and it just gives you a warning. Just imagine those orange cones all the issues, all the problems, and they're nothing but just warning signs for you on the road. So they're saying that at this very moment you can't go there, and guess what? You placed it there. You placed it there somewhere, somehow, without knowing about it. You created it for you, and you created it by yourself. So all those roadblocks that you believed, they are just bars and roadblocks. If you turn them to orange cones, if you get there, when you are ready to pass through that and go through that road less traveled, stop the car, stop yourself, get out and move the cone or go around it. And if you can't, believe it or not, they are short enough that even a kid can put their feet and cross over it. By doing that, by imagining it and knowing that orange cones can be moved by you, you can even hop over it. And you can even make it a beautiful obstacle course for you to learn how to drive better through obstacles in life then all the problems the negativities and the issues will become small orange cones and the big wall can become a shield so that if and when you need to you can pick it up and that you don't have walls around you. So what are walls? Wall is dense. Roadblocks are dense. They're hard. They are metal. When we imagine them, we imagine a wall to be concrete or cement or even brick. And the roadblocks are usually wrought irons, right? And gates hard but if we make it smaller movable and then if we make them cones we can move it walk over and turn it into something that we can maneuver and learn how to drive better faster through obstacles in life wouldn't that be easier for us to deal with challenges to deal with stressors, to deal either financial, relationship, even health, and recognize that we have the power within us, not only to tap within and recognize what we create bigger than what it is, but how we can also create them into something that is softer, easier to maneuver, and even give it a color, color of orange, color of not only warning, but color of sensuality, color of lightness, and compassion. Oranges, citrus, the smell of citrus, even imagining yourself blossoming like oranges and having an orange in your hand and just imagine even at this very moment 
just holding an orange. You haven't even cut it. But even by holding an orange, touching your skin, if you were to remove the orange, your skin would still smell like an orange. And if you were to peel the skin of the orange, we recognize that is a shield. Most things have a shield. Flowers have that beautiful shield. That when the light shines, they open. And at darkness, at night, they go into their cocoon. And that's what we do. We sleep. We close down when it is dark, when it's hard, when it's tough. I hope this makes sense. And because of how my client made a change in his BS, and you know what BS is, right? I've said this so many times. It's a belief system. And yes, you can use it too and say, my friend, uh, my coach, my mentor, Lisa Bubari, was saying that BS is nothing but a belief system. And realize that we all have a belief system. And which one? Do we use which one do we misuse and that again is a choice it's a choice that we have it's a choice that we make in life you are more than enough and having that self-esteem within you and knowing that you are worthy and that you matter is the biggest gift that you can give yourself, a gift of appreciation, a gift of, I'm okay. I'm okay. I am good enough. I matter. Because if you don't, Appreciate yourself. If you're not accepting yourself for who you are today, this very day, with all your BSs and shields and obstacles that you created for yourself, you're not validating your core self, that little girl or little boy within you. And how beautiful it is to start with us with the self so that when you are full and you are filled with that love and appreciation of yourself it's not oh you are nobody without me but it's saying I like myself I'm okay I'm okay and you have no right to tell me otherwise you have no right to inflict pain upon me, hurt upon me, shame upon me, or any of that. Because today I learned that I can shift my belief system. I can turn my hardcore obstacles into cones, an orange cone, smell the oranges and blossom like oranges and all the other obstacles the walls that I created by me for me for a good reason for a good reason I can turn them into shields and pick it up and shield myself with them shield my heart shield my core and shield myself I am in control. I am. I hope this resonates with you. I hope this day of Heal Talk Tuesday with Lisa 
brought one notch, one percent of a gift that I wanted to share with you. A message that you can share with someone else. And if you think this message was worthy, that you can click and share it with your friends so they may see it. By the way, um, before I forget, I'm going to do something incredible. And I'm offering a coaching session for um, three people who want to join in and uh, take advantage of my coaching. And, you know, I'm doing something crazy because today is a special day. Let's put it this way. Today is Bodhi's birthday and it's a celebration. And why not? Let's do a coaching session with three individuals who want to come in. And it's a one-hour coaching session that I will give to three people who PM me first, email me first, or even call me and uh, for $99. And it's unbelievable because usually I charge three times more than that. But more than that is because it's about gifting. It's about giving. And if I can help you, by all means, I am here for you. Um, in closing, evoke what was. Embrace what is the reality, the here and now. And know that you have the right to evolve to all your dreams that can become reality. Why? Because you are more than enough. And you do matter. You matter to me. And I thank you for being a part of Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. And uh, this is a moment of heal inspiration, isn't it? Thank you. And I look forward to speaking to you. I can't wait to see who are the first three people who take my offer. Until I see you next week, I bid you goodbye. Ah, let's see. Is there any questions? Oh, thank you for all of you who have joined in. Hey, Katie, we're going to see each other soon, right? Hi, Nelson. Salam, Behruz. Hi, Mandy. John, nice having you here. Hi, Ruby John. Hello, Angela. Uh, I don't want to name everybody. Roxy, Alice, John. Oh, my God, Alex, John, you're back. Alice, you're back again from all your travels. Ida, Angela, Robert, and Isabel, thank you for all of you being a part of Heal Talk Tuesday. And uh, until next week, I bid you goodbye. Ciao.